Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. That was an excerpt from an old track that I started working on last year in Audio Evolution on my iPad and never finished. Don't know why, but I really must revisit it because I do dig that groove, but that was the first track that I used Flux Mini in and it really impressed me. Should just mention, in this video we will be looking at demos on both desktop and on iOS. Now the point of this video being that considering that Kalem Audio gave us Flux Mini for free and it was awesome and then they gave us Flux Mini 2 for free which is even better and then also released a pro version with more features. We're going to take a look at the evolution of these apps, what each of them do, the capabilities, the features and then you can make an informed decision on whether you might benefit from spending some money on the pro version or whether one of the free versions would suffice for you. So let's take a look at the original Flux Mini on my desktop. For the introduction to a new piece of music I've just started working on, I really wanted to use this bass drone sound in Massive X. But for me, it really came to life when I threw Flux Mini on it and drew this little shape here into this graph. Whatever shape you have drawn in the graph can be used to affect the amplitude, the low pass filter, or the high pass filter. Let's have a listen to a few presets just to give you an idea of what can be achieved from the amplitude list. Let's have a fake side chain. And some funky goat horns. And now from the filter section, let's have a listen to Dotted Francis. And my favorite preset, this one. Now we can drop the effect down in the mix, which can be used to create a really nice layered sound. Listen to that depth there. Alright, we can increase or decrease the resonance. Switch over to the other filter, see if you prefer that one. And we can change how quickly, or how slowly indeed, the effect will synchronize to the host. And of course, you can also draw in your own shape. Just double click, move your points around, change your curve, etc. etc. As soon as you see Flux Mini 2 on my iPad here, you'll see that the user interface has been overhauled, and the graphics are now beautiful, but whilst this is essentially still the same piece of software and still free, there are many new features to take note of. I'm just going to mute off a couple of instruments down here, and show you that from this drop down list here, this is where we select a filter type, and we now have a band pass, as well as the low and high that we had in Flux Mini 1. Or we can just leave that off if all we want to do is adjust the amplitude. But unlike Flux Mini 1, we can now adjust the amplitude whilst we have a filter type selected. We adjust the cutoff and resonance here, and below these controls, we have a curve control. Let me just turn up the mix so that you can hear this next bit a bit more clearly. I'll just move this curve control across here. Which moves into plus and minus values. Sync now goes up as far as 32 bars. Or we can switch sync off for manual adjustment in milliseconds. Now whatever I have in this window here will be duplicated if I press this magic button here as many times as I wish. This button will reduce that back and to clear out this window so I can start throwing in nodes of my own I press this button, double click, double click, double click or double tap if you're using your finger on the iPad screen and just grab the blue node to adjust that curve. Let's double that up. That's kind of interesting. I'm just going to change the... Yeah, okay. That's kind of nice. And we have undo and redo buttons. 
which is very useful for a stupid old hippie like me. Now up here, I can go back and I can select the, if I can find it, I can select the preset that I made earlier. Now over here, I can adjust the X and Y values in the grid. And I can use these controls. In fact, if I just show you this, unselect that, go back in, reselect it and you'll see that this little toolbar here is now on the screen at all times and this button here this will make the nodes snap so you see they're moving freely at the moment this will make the nodes snap to the grid and this one makes the curves move in accordance with the grid as well Okay, now before I forget, I've got to show you this. Um, we'll just mute that one and unmute that one. In Flux Mini 2, many of the parameters are exposed. So we can control things inside of the software with CC messages, like I am doing here with Rosetta LFO. I'm moving this cutoff here. When we first take a look at Flux Pro, it may look like Flux Mini 2 with a few extra bolts on features, but it actually goes way deeper than that. We now have three graphs to play with, and we can access those three graphs by using these helpfully color coded buttons down here. Now, at the moment, in the initialize setting, only graph A is in use, and I'm just going to grab the cutoff, open that up. So you can hear the original sample that we're working with here, so you can hear what's going on. Now, as I move this cutoff control, you'll see that the line around the outside, which is affected by this control here, is pink. And that shows that this graph is assigned to this effect. We have four effect slots that we can assign to any of the graphs. So let's just go here to effect slot one. We'll switch that out for a fixed delay. And as I move this control, you'll see that it's pink, meaning it's assigned to this graph. So to prove a point, if I go to graph B, if I wanted to also assign this graph to this effect, I get a green line. And this is how we know which effect is assigned to which graph. Okay, double click to get rid of that. And back to graph A. Now down here, we have some shapes already drawn in for us that we can drop into the graph. So let's just grab one, bring it up to the graph. Now as I move it up in the graph window, you'll see the large gray shaded area there in the background that would fill up the whole graph space. Or if I want to place it carefully like this, I bring it down in the window and I can drop it in exactly where I want it. So the higher in the window, the larger space it's going to fill. Should grab a couple more shapes. No idea what this is gonna sound like, but part of the fun with this app is kind of the experimentation. All right, now, the sync control down here, this applies to the graph window that you have open. So if I just switch over to B, you'll see that's still in its original setting. Whereas these three controls down here, they apply to everything. These are global controls. Right, so. Now let's go over to graph B. And let's do something with this. We'll open an effect here. Um, maybe choose some rate modulation let's 
there, quite like that. And on graph C. Let's grab a filter. Okay, we'll make it. There are an awful lot of filters to choose from, by the way. Let's try this. Okay, now down here, we can also affect how much of each graph, how much of each effect, if you like, we are sending to the mix. So, I have graph C selected. If I move this control here, it can affect the mix for graph C. for B don't go anywhere yet I want to play you out with some sounds that I made in Flux Pro with some presets I made for Flux Pro and those presets are already available for free download at my Patreon account where I will also be giving away some free codes for the iOS version of this app down below the video, you'll find a link where anybody watching this video can download for free some samples that are made from the sounds you're going to hear at the end of this video. Now, normally at this point in a video, I'll be giving my own thoughts and conclusions on a piece of software, but the whole point of this video is for you to make up your own mind about it. So let me know in the comments below the video, what do you think? Will one of the free versions suffice for you? Or maybe because of watching this video, might you invest in the pro version? Or if you already did invest in it, then also in the comments, let me know, do you use it? And what do you think to it? All right, so before I sign off, I just need to say to you, if you want to find out any more about me, my website, my merchandise, Patreon account, etc., links all below the video. If you'd like to help out the channel, links below the video. So until my next video, take care of yourselves, be good people, be kind to each other, make lots of music, and don't pussy pants about. Now take a listen to this.